Benelli, you gave me nothing to work with when when that first came. Oh my God, some of the photos he he was sending me. I'm like, how? What am I supposed to do with this? I'm coaching. I have no time for photos. I'm yeah. teaching. Well, guys, uh, welcome, welcome to um, the uh, creation series. Uh, we got a pretty good show uh, planned here, um, and one of uh, the things that we wanted to do we wanted to take some questions at the end of this so anybody have any questions feel free to wait to the end or if you wanted to post them as we're going we'll we'll glance at them and hopefully we could answer uh a lot of them and let's let's get started here so so the question is why right benelli yeah, we keep, uh, you know, one of the nice things about, <clears throat> and I've mentioned this actually a couple, to a couple of people that I've, that I've talked to between these presentations is is the is how fun it is to do these with you because it starts getting me thinking about all the different drills that I do and the drills that I steal and the drills that I see and the ones that I like. And, you know, the one question that comes up a lot to the coaches I work with is and and this is this was a this was an old thing right that we used to do in coaching clinics with usa hockey was we should just show a lot of drills and you know you didn't know what the level the person was in the room you don't know what the level the coach was in the room so why are you doing this drill like is it you know what what is the purpose of the drill that you're presenting to me today yeah no it, it's all about it's all about asking and, and uh, to be honest i used to love when my players that I was coaching was asking me questions. Why are we doing this drill? What what should it be focusing on? Because um, I, I never I never got frustrated with that at all. I know some coaches do, but I, I love those those players that ask questions because I, I'm pretty sure that's the reason why I was able to play so long was was the was the questions because I wanted to know that there was a purpose for everything I was doing uh, when right. we're doing these drill. So. We're going to go little kind of little uh, clip notes version of what we're going to be doing. We're going to be, why are we doing this drill? We're going to go into a review parts, uh, steps in drill creation, kind of reviewing that and real, real, real world application. We'll create three drills based on a scenario. So why, why this drill? Like, like I, I, I see all the time I walk into the rinks and I see these coaches doing these drills. And if they were to ask why they're doing this drill, I'm going to say 99% of them would be like, it's easy. Oh, I, I, I got it. I saw it. Somebody else, right? I was in the rink. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I think a lot of it too, is just not knowing they just see that you know there's a certain group doing it and but they really don't know the the thought behind it right and one of the things that we want to make sure we're we're presenting you know anytime we're talking with coaches is and and you know and frankly parents too and and you know our customer right and the kids is that you know you know the 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 drill that we develop why why are we doing the drill because what is the purpose behind it and like i'll see coaches all the time doing three on three drills three on three cross ice that seems to be the go-to you know end of practice drill but like what are you doing with that drill and what are you doing with that game to actually uh inspire learning and to and to get players to you know think and to get to where it's just not a monotonous best kid gets the puck and he always keeps it and dangles it and scores and then another three go on the ice so mm -hmm. there is a lot of you know why why are we doing the drill yeah number one is hey it's probably easy right i have to think about it that much i threw it out there um you know, it's an easy drill to do. And maybe, you know, most of the time, I think when we add, add easy drills, it's because we're not prepared. Um, mm -hmm. Because it's just so, I don't know, you know, who who hasn't seen you walking in a rink in the last eight minutes of practice is, is uh, breakaway drills, right? It's a breakaway contest. Yeah. Why? Because, because a coach didn't, probably didn't plan on practice. I rarely ever see breakaway contests on the end of a written out, you know, drawn out practice plan. Yeah, and I think, I think obviously the, the shootout. I, I wish I would have worked a little bit more on shootouts because I was kind of involved in a lot of them. But um, I, I think shoot, shootout, it's a skill. It's a skill. And 
like the coach has to understand different ways of teaching it as well right like i know i know a lot of the parents are going to be fathers a lot of the parents are going to be people that that have a real job during the day and they get home and they don't have time to do it and to be honest don't you know i don't like making too many plugs but coach them is very simple because we have a whole about 500 drills now of marketplace drills and a lot of them are, are having videos now so it, it does it does make uh, make make it easy um also also why why this drill well maybe it, it, it's a skill and you gotta you get a skill skill development like maybe but the thing is you just gotta watch out with with you see some of these skills that you see in the nhl and obviously there, there's you want to make sure that your kids are the right age to be teaching that drill all right and it's and you want to make sure that your kids um understand what the skill is instead of just showing a video and go do it right 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 and i think that's just a, it, it just comes down to our fundamentals of you know knowing your level of play knowing the kids knowing the the age group knowing the you know all the different parameters mm -hmm. that we'll get to around building your drills out and building your practice plans mm -hmm. and then w whether this uh this drill replicates a skill or technique that you want your players to improve on yeah like like you have to understand like a lot of coaches get a team and their head director or whatever doesn't even talk to them the rest of the year uh, a lot of them if you were to ask them what you're supposed to be teaching this year i'm going to say a lot of them don't have would have no idea it's just like um uh you're in grade eights and you're supposed to or well i guess it would be grade seven or six you're supposed to be teaching multiplication and if you don't teach them that year the following year when they are expected to learn to know those skills you've really screwed your your uh your players and, and to be honest, it's a responsibility for being a coach. So that, that would be, that would be a very, very, uh, uh, important thing to keep in mind when you're doing it, when you're planning the, your, your drills in, in your, in your, in, for your teams, you want to go with every single practice. You want to go in and, and, and push it, push it again, like keep on going and evolving your kids. Right. Right. And I think that's, and it's just knowing the building blocks of, of skill development. And that's mm -hmm. really the basics of, of coming into coaching. But, but I do, I do think you, you hit on a nerve there too, that, you know, your directors and your administrators and, and the, the veteran coaches in those organizations, you know, have to be the stewards of making sure that we're following those guidelines and following those building blocks and that your eight U coach isn't working on the left wing lock and never working on, you know, puck handling, you know, drills down, you know, in the, in the tight, corners and the dirty areas of the net mm -hmm. uh, you know that all they're doing is these big all, big flow drills that aren't going to replicate uh, later on for them so you're absolutely yeah. right you got to be on the same page as your as your organization and your and your you know your, the teams within even an age group mm -hmm. and then obviously the the whole you saw it on social media tv um or found it in coach them marketplace there right I'm guilty, of this. Listen, I'm, I'm guilty of seeing something you know you've been doing a great job of of presenting other coaches drills on Twitter and Instagram, you know, of, of other coaches, you know, that, that we can learn from. And I love those. I mean, I think it's like, Oh wow, that's a really interesting drill. Now I probably, I, and maybe I, and I think, I bet you the people that are on this call probably think the same way that, Oh, I like that drill. And now I can go and manipulate it and tweak it to fit me. Mm -hmm. Right. And fit my team rather than say, Oh, I'm going to fit this, this square peg in a round hole, no matter what, even though my kids aren't ready for it, I'm going to do that, that skill or that drill. That's where we're kind of getting away from, right? It's there. There's an idea. Now, what can we work around that idea? What can we, how can that be the foundation of a, of a drill or a skill or a game that we want to play based off of, you know, knowing our own team? Well, I'm going to say a few of those Instagram posts that I was doing because I make sure that I, I uh, analyze every single one of them. And I'm going to tell you, I'm using a couple of those for defense first. I'm going to tell you that much because there was a couple really cool things. So, um, hey, if anybody's on this call um, at Instagram, uh, at Coach Them for both Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. So, um, okay, well, 
hey, we're we're at we're at the point. Let's come up with a scenario. So, finale last last uh, last game, our kids were having difficulties going and grabbing that puck at the, our forwards, grabbing that puck around the hash mark and getting it out of the zone, or at least having control. So that that is that is I think the scenario for today. So now let's go into the steps in drill creation. Yeah, and 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 I and just to reiterate too that you know we we've seen <clears throat> this is just one piece of our practice plan. This is one piece of maybe you know the fundamentals of what we of something we want to teach. It's an identifiable issue that we have, and we want to fix it now. One of the, you know, so my forwards are having a difficulty taking pucks off the wall. Now, as every coach on this call is going to be thinking, well, there's a million ways to take pucks off the wall. Like there's the pucks are coming in so many different directions. So I think what we're going to focus on today is just identifying the the core uh, times it happens. And it was funny when I was doing the research for this presentation, you know, and I watched a couple of uh, I was I just took a bunch of um, clips off of Instat and I couldn't believe all the times I found it within shifts, forget about the game, every single shift, you know, players getting pucks off the wall. Very rarely did you see, uh, you know, and, and, and what Instat does is they, they'll, they'll tag things as controlled breakouts and it didn't have, there wasn't many controlled breakouts where, we where, where a defenseman took the puck set up behind the net, the forward posted up, made a pass and out of the zone. Didn't happen very often. More times than not, it was, it was the ability for these pro players to take pucks off the wall. Well, it, what what did it? Most sports are all repetitive actions in the game, and it's just variations of it, right? Like being aware on the ice where the guys are, but being being creative and and not really doing the same thing. You could probably do the same thing twice, maybe three times, but after that, players are going to get pick that up pretty quick. So it's it's all about being creative and and to be to be honest, I used to love the last five minutes of practice. Our coach used to give us five minutes to basically screw around, and we used to play uh, keep keep away with, with the puck along the boards, and we would play that for like uh, it, it was all, like it was, well, obviously the five minutes of left of practice, but it was just such a great competitive game uh, that we um, we we ended up playing. So. <clears throat> Well, so let, let's start into the steps of drill creation, right? You, we got to identify the need, and we did, right? It's the difficulties taking pucks off the wall. Yeah, and so now we're understanding your age level, right? And if I'm doing, you know, 8U cross ice hockey, that's still, there's still a key to make sure that players know how to even approach the puck, right? Because we want to reiterate that and teach that into their, into into their lexicon of the of their abilities is to say, listen, how are we taking pucks and understanding at what age, you know, are they going to start introducing the likelihood that there could be a body check? Uh, at what age do we want to teach the nuances of chipping? At what age do we want to take the, the the you know have the understanding that we want possession more than we want puck movement? So all those kind of things have to come into place when we're thinking about you know understanding our age level and then and then really. A lot of it's the skill, right? Does the, do, the, do the little do the players have the skill first, the basis to make these plays, uh, along with the strength that they have? And, and what you were saying about age appropriate, they're all on Hockey Canada and USA Hockey. They have all the skills laid out uh, at what age you should be teaching this. Um, yep. So break down the skill and terminology. Yeah, so I, I, this is a pet peeve of mine is the terminology side, right? Because when I, when I get to a player at 14U, you know, that player has to understand or should understand certain terminology. And if they don't, I need to make sure that my coaches the co and the coaches in the organization and the coaches that work with me and even the parents, right, have the same terminology that we're all, we're, we're all working from the same thesaurus that, you know, when I say, hey, you got to post up, you got to, you know, find the, you know, find the weak side D. You have to make sure, you know, you, you have to, uh, I call, I, I call, I say button hook all the time, or, you know, even people in my age see you use the Gretzky curl. These guys, I don't even know what the Gretzky curl is. What the hell are you talking about? Right. Mm -hmm. So make sure your terminology is, is in, in, 
as I think it's just as important as, as breaking down the individual pieces of the skill that you're trying to teach in the drill. Mm -hmm. And and you know what, you can't go and tell somebody to go an angle if you haven't explained it to them. So, and the one thing, if you don't know how this, what the skill is, learn about it, take a few minutes to go and, and, and learn about angling. I got, I got, I got some, uh, there's a, there's a great video, uh, out there of, of my angling. So it's something that these, these things are, th- these things are out there and you know what, book some time with Benelli if you don't, if you don't know how to do it. Yeah. Or get, or, or it's just, it's a terminology. There's a lot of ways, you know, we have to build a glossary of terms for our kids. And if you're a leader of an organization, you want to make sure those, those terms are all the way down like mm-hmm. throughout the organization so that your eight U coach is speaking the same language as your 15 U coach. Well, th- there's ama- amazing associations with coach them that they are a top down approach. They don't, they don't just give their teams out. They don't allow uh, teams to be hijacked. They go and teach these kids um, like uh, Kitchener uh, is, is one of them. Um, um, at Burlington's another and, and I'm just, there, there's, there's lots of them right on coach them, but it, it's something that it's, it, they're not just going and giving away teams. They're going and helping these coaches uh, um, give, give um, the best um, experience for the kids and to actually learn. So th- then, then it gets to the point of assemble the drill because like, you can't just jump, jump into this. You have to know the steps involved every single time and you should be going through that. Right. I mean, you, you, when you're, when you're assembling the drill, you got to know about, you know, where, what rink you're going to be on, how much space do you have? Where do you want to do it? Do you want to make it a station? Do you want to make it a a full ice drill? Do you want to make it, do you want to turn it into a flow drill? Is it part of a bigger drill or are you going to do progressions? Like I, I'm, I really, uh, really love progressions. I really love drills that, that keep building on each other and building on each other and building on each other and get harder and harder and harder, or they have to think more and think more, even in games, right? That maybe a, a one-on-one game becomes, it becomes some type of an activation game. Mm-hmm. So assemble the drill, you know, in your head, you're thinking like already when we first started talking about this, you know, the drills are starting to go through my head about all the different ways that I'm going to go now seek out examples of how I'm going to assemble that drill so I can show mm-hmm. the kids. And then, and then after that, after this is all done, Hey, you know what? You go and just fine tune the drill. You, you figure out where the coaches are. You figure out um, where the pucks are. Um, so that's kind of the, the whole steps in drill creation. Um, one of the things I'm, I was just going to say, I just thought of like, if uh, Benelli, if you ended up, going and wanting to start a business, would you just go and open up, go, go, uh, buy, buy a store, rent, a, a rent, rent a place and just go set, set up shop. Or would you come up with a business plan? Yeah. You got to have a plan, right? And you got, and I think yeah. the, the, the idea and, and the piece of, you know, getting the coach them pitch side out of the way, right. Is that you can go in and assemble your drill and then back it into it. Mm-hmm. Like, and then figure out where the players are going to go, then figure out where the pucks are going to go, then kind of figure out, oh, that flow doesn't look like mm-hmm. it's working. And you can literally live see it working and change and manipulate the, 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 the patterns mm-hmm. so that you can create this drill in, in a positive way for your kids. For sure. And then, so we're going to focus on break down the skill and terminology and assemble the drill. We're going to speed it up here, but um, so breaking down the skill, uh, breaking down the skill, um, and to be honest, it's a big difference for the right, left and right player, right? Coming down the boards, um, if we are going to be focusing on getting that puck out, a right-handed shot going down, um, and we're going to be going to talking about all well, the downstream and the upstream and everything, but going downstream. So this is going from blue line down um, to to the goal line. That's going downstream. So it's going to be a lot easier to pick the puck off the boards, right? But, um, he, uh, and it's going to be a lot easier to go to the middle. Uh, a left handed shot, him going down with his stick placement, if he has his stick on, on an angle, that puck is going to go right to the middle. And I came up with a couple of techniques while I was playing. When that puck is coming around, you are not 
it's not like a shovel that you're, you're, you're almost like pushing it back. You're like slapping it at the, at the same time as it, as it comes. And it, and it's pretty cool because it, when it starts going around the boards, it spins. So if you put your stick on that angle, it'll spin right off it. So there's little cool techniques that, that you could learn along the way, but yeah, like right, left and right players, you'll have to play differently. And as a coach, you got to show both, both scenarios of what, what to do. You can't just say, just go and do it. Right. And, and just showing where that placement is. Hey, maybe, you know, like I know when, when like I was saying, telling you uh, when we were going over this, like when I was growing up, it was always, butt on the boards in the back, you know, your, your front blade that, you know, furthest from the puck is along the edge of the, boards and you just couldn't the game's too fast right now there's no movement like that was a like you talk about static that was a literally post up and wait and have the puck come to you and now you know we don't we, we want to teach players to be going to the puck and and closing gaps and creating offense and securing defense mm -hmm. by securing the puck quicker and better and more efficiently right so i think that's where a lot of our need came from in this presentation was maintaining speed knowing how to pick up pucks downstream upstream and if you're just there you know the puck's coming around how do you corral it and then what do you do with it and just these little micro skills of it within that category so that we can now retain a, a possession of the puck or get it out in a safe way or reverse it in a safe place so that we can then you know create offense yeah so it's like i said the sport uh, well especially hockey is very repetitive so I'm going to tell you, there's probably, you would probably break out of your zone maybe three times, maybe, well, two times at least on every single shift. I, I would say, depending obviously with the levels and everything, but that's a lot of times for your forwards throughout the, for, throughout the um, uh, game to go and do that. And, and you multiply that by how many games, that's a lot of time. So going and spending these little, very, very, uh, um uh unique and and um almost just for the forwards if you focus and have it in your zone allow the defenseman to go do some stuff on their zone so do a split split um practice but uh going upstream right. is obviously going from the goal line up to uh, up to the blue line and static position is basically receiving it probably about that hash mark you don't want to go any higher because that that defenseman is going to be coming down yeah, um, no doubt. And I think that's, and, and knowing all those pieces there, I think is important as you're going into it. Yep. And and then assemble the drill. So now, now we're at the point we've, we've learned all the different I've, this one's breaking down the skills. Very important. You as a coach have to look and break it completely down before you go and teach it. So now let's go into ice needed, right? It's simple. Hey, whether you're going full ice stations, whether you're going a station kind of on one side or you, you're going for a full zone or half ice. You gotta go and really, really, um, uh, really just figure out what you want. You could always take a, a station base and, and turn it into a zone later on. So then just drawing the drill. Like at the end of the day, there's so many things. Like, so I have my drill book. That's what I used to have. Oh my God. Like I used to have, well, not coach down there, but I used to draw drills all the time and, and you know what, you mess up. Um, now I do it on coach them and it's a lot easier to do. So, but just don't worry, don't be concerned about where the pucks are and where the players are, just go and do the movements and then um, go from there. And then obviously at the end, we're going to fill fill in the final details of the coaches, players, puck placements. Um, and then obviously a, probably a big vital thing is, you're, you got to create the description and key points that, that really helps out the assistants, um, in order to understand the drill before they get there. And that's the power of coach them that allows you to go and create your drill. And once you have it, it's there for life, but being able to go and, uh, share, being able to go and share your, your practice plan with your coaching staff is huge. Um, so let's go into drill creation. Receiving puck off the wall. I'll let Benelli uh, take over of the screen. Yeah, I'm just going to, I'm just going to, so I'm going to pull up just, uh, I already have my coach them uh, site opened up. <clears throat> so I already, you know, uh, just logged in. I come in, I'm going to name uh, my puck retrieval uh, drill. 
<clears throat> now I, I just put it in capital letters so I could find it in the uh, you know in my in my in my categories here on the right. But basically, what we wanted to first off was start with a static, a static acceptance of the puck, right? So going by you know some of the stuff we've been talking about here, uh, making sure that you know number one is I want to know what the drill is. Now if I'm working with other coaches or players, I'm probably going to show them what I mean by a static reception, right? So um, really nicely to coach them able, is that you're able to take a, take the uh, video, put it in here, uh, the link. I have it set up with my Vimeo account and, and a, on, a, on a, a clip that I took off. And now I can, I can just, so I want to remind myself, here's the drill I want to do. How am I going to replicate this? You're going to see the video here. It's going to open up in Vimeo. And now what we're trying to do is create this piece right here. This little, this is what we call in, in, in what we're defining to the kids, a static a static retrieval players players facing the glass players picking up the puck he's not looping he's not coming in the puck's just coming around the wall and it's a static okay i gotta secure the puck mike just talked about that about the angle of the stick you know where the player is you, you'll see in a couple of videos later even how players learn to protect themselves so they're not getting hit from behind and and at the same time protecting the puck they're surrounding the puck and there's no chance in that puck retrieval there that that puck, well, there's there's very little chance that that puck's going to rim around and pop out to the front of the net because of the way the the player positioned the stick to get it. Now, if his skate was on the boards at an angle, and that puck rips around the boards and rims around the uh, you know the wall, that puck, if you can't control it, it's going right to it's going right to the slot. So we're trying to we're trying to avoid that, right? So you know one of the things Mike talked about here was now knowing, you know, what are the roots we're going to talk about? Well, I know. I, I know I want to have in, in, in what I do, I want to have a, a, a static stop. So I'm probably going to be, okay, my players in front of the net or in, on the side, and I have to go and I got to statically stop the puck, just like the drill showed, right? So that's one aspect that I'm going to be building in my drills is the static retrieval. The next retrieval that I'm going to work on is, is, knowing that, is knowing that I got to take a puck and I've got to move with it. And I've got to go, in in our case, upstream. So if I want to get, if I want to get to where my player was, and I want to get upstream of the puck, now I know that I can take this that angle and teach it that I can now go upstream of this puck by where my body's going to have to angle and move. Right. So as I'm going upstream, that's another aspect of the game or of this drill that I want to be able to teach. And I and I think the last uh, one we talked about um about you know upstream downstream now we're going to be downstream and so downstream is usually the player and we'll show you a video about this a little bit downstream is usually the player coming back into the zone and having to uh gain possession of the puck as the puck's coming back to them like so it's coming at them and now we want to then we want to position ourselves uh for the play anything before i go on mike on that no that's absolutely perfect all right so we're gonna we're gonna concentrate on the static, right? So right now I know I'm going to build my static drill. I'm going to go back. I'm going to make sure this is in this particular drill. It's black. Is that it's just easier for me to see and understand. Now I know I want the player to go here, and I already know that the puck is going to get rimmed around the boards, and it has to get to here, right? This is the this is the scenario I want to make. So I'm going to be able to take that puck. I'm going to create that. I'm going to create that little bit of a. Um, a little bit of a rim so I can see that we're rimming the puck. And now I got to know, well, who's going to, who's actually going to be in my drill. I'm probably going to have, a, I'm probably in this case, I'm going to have a forward line here. Again, let's go back to looking at what we're trying to build our drill off of. And it's the player coming, the player coming from, you know, this area here and now getting to a place where they can secure the puck on the wall. It's not, it's not, you know, they're not, they're not skating, you know, 50 feet. So we might want to, sorry. We might want to come in here and make sure that this player is starting this drill a little, you know, maybe this drill starts here, depending on, you know, how fast we want to and the level we're at. So I got my net that in this case, it's going to be in the right place. I got my coach with his pucks. He's probably going to send the puck in here for the D to get it. Um, you know, I'm setting my drill up. I know if I'm not coaching, I want my coaches to know, all right, you got to make sure you have a, uh, bunch of pucks and then I'm going to have my D so I can control them a little bit on when they're going to go. So I'm going to have my D 
is going to be skating here to retrieve the puck. So in this case, I'm, they're skating without a puck. So they're just skating down here, and then they're going to be then they're going to be actually be skating with the puck for a little bit here. As I'm building the drill, I know that okay, they're probably going to get it. And they're going to rim it. They're going to chip it. They're going to get it around here, and this becomes my little static drill. Now, and Mike, you can add to this too from what you've seen at your level or any level. You know, we can add so many different aspects of the base of this drill, right? We can add uh, this. This player could reverse it. This player could chip it. This player could um, hold on to it. This player could eat it. There's all well, kinds you, of things you, you could can even do. you could even have it that. Uh, you could have a defenseman at the blue line. So when that when that forward comes uh, comes up or was receiving that puck, that defenseman he has the option of going right in and uh, going right on him, and that forward has to react, or he would be waiting at the blue line, and that forward has to skate out to the blue line, and he has to get it by him some way, whether it be between his feet or off the boards. Uh, and that defenseman would go back into the line, and that defenseman that uh, ended up breaking him out goes to being the point guy now. So that's yeah, a pretty there's good all rotation. Kinds of, yeah, there's all kinds of rotations that can come from this, and I and I think that's where me that's I mean obviously that's why I love the program because it, it allows you to build the progression within your drills. So that's that's our that's our that's our static, um, you know, puck retrieval. Now, if you have any questions, you know, please jump in and ask because I think uh you know I think this is the time where you know I was tell I was talking to Mike earlier you know this is where I really want to debate with people I really want to know you know what would you do differently or how you would teach this differently because I think it's great to hear other ideas about how you would approach this but again we're just this is this is any skill this is any drill this is just a thought process of maybe how we can teach our other coaches and ourselves to be able to share these drills and and put them in a place where um you know we can show other coaches now so this is my static uh, puck retrieval drill. So I saved it. I know it's my static drill. It's in my system. I'm good to go. Now, what I've done already is build uh, my downstream and upstream. So we're going to go to upstream first. So I go to my puck retrieval upstream. The only thing you can see, I, I, I like to have the ability now to change. This might be, if this is like a six station drill, maybe this is station two and on the other side of the rink. Maybe it's an opportunity for somebody to take this and say, well, okay, the next step now is to come upstream on the puck. And this is, I, I, I hope the video is correct. We'll see. I saved the video, same thing. And as you can see, the player's coming, in this case, um, coming down low. And now the player's going upstream with the puck. So he corrals the puck, goes upstream. We talked a little bit about where that player is physically. But again, it's now the player gets it. He's going upstream. And to Mike's point earlier, this could be a chip. This could be a reverse. Maybe he wants to, maybe we want to teach that player to get that puck a little lower. But the bottom line is my kids will under and my coaches will understand when I'm saying let's let's create a scenario where the puck is coming upstream. This is really where it's going to be crucial that I start teaching these skills of 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 what angling is, right? In 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 a in a a seven-year-old's head, angling it, it probably looks like the flag behind me. Angling is this right? It's not, it's not a circular motion. It's not corralling the puck. Like I, last night I did a, I actually did this drill with my little uh, rookie league kids and we actually just called it hunting. Like you got to hunt the puck. You got to find, you got to find that, 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 the, where that puck is going and where that root is. And then you got to hunt it down. You can't go meet it. Cause if you try to go meet it, it's going to go past you. You gotta, you gotta get behind it and pounce on it. And that's how I'm talking to a seven-year-old, but I don't know. It probably works with half of my 14 year olds too, but just get around there, pounce on that puck. And I think that's what we're trying to show here in the drill. And you can see that the, you know, obviously it's the professional level that they're well, coming around. Know, just to let you know that, just to let you know that that worked for me too. Right. <laughs> hunt, hunt and pounce. And, I and, like and, it. And corral. Well, that, that's the, it, you got to put it in, in, in ways kids could understand right and be creative like i a lot of times i'll go and say something one one day and then another thing the next day but it would be a, it would be a similar thing and they, they would they would get it they would get all the different ways that i would put it um because that's what you're trying to do you're trying to explain to them that 
they have that kind of ma matrix moment that they're like, oh my God, it totally makes sense, right? Right, so co corralling. Now you can replicate this, and and to Mike's point, over and over and over again. There's all time you can you could chip the puck hard off the top. You can make the older kids, you know, corral it with their hands. You can yeah. you know maybe get in front of it and eat it. You can do all kinds of stuff can start happening once you identify the skill that you need and the progression of the drill. But, right, but so that's our Benelli. Uh, you go and do this this practice. Can you do it again the next practice? Yes. Yeah. Well, that's it. That's totally, it. Why would you like, do it? I'd probably everybody, do it seven times in a row. <laughs> but every but everybody thinks that you go have to go and do a completely different plan the next day. No. Yeah, and again, it goes back to understanding your team, the amount of ice you have. Listen, if I have a college team and I have ice every single day, or I have a junior team and I have ice every day, and I have twenty five minutes before or after practice to, to, for the kids to work on certain mm -hmm. skills, then I'm probably going to really micromanage this type of skill. If I have my you know, my, my 12 U double a team, I'm going to try to incorporate this skill and drill within bigger drills, like within using my ice time better. Uh, it, again, it all depends on you. And, and that's it actually, that's where I've been uh, having the most fun is through coach them booking, you know, all these, all these calendar invites with or, organizations from around the country, actually right now around the world. And just going over like a little, like with two or three coaches sitting down for a half hour and saying, this is how, I would teach a breakout in nine different ways, like all the components, put them all together and you're off to the races. And I think that's, that's so fun for, for me to get feedback and for me to be able to use coach them as a vehicle for them to say, okay, here's one piece, second piece, third piece, fourth piece. And now look at your kids are now you're in a control breakout, you know, well, and you can teach I, that very easily. I'm going to tell you, it, it, it's it's crazy just just even this with this um webinar uh, of how many people are booking you now um i was looking at your your booking you you actually have no bookings available uh, the rest of this month and it's been like that for a couple of weeks so um honestly for to to hire a, a private um to get somebody on a, a professional coach on the ice it's like 200 200 some some of them are even closer to 300 dollars for what one hundred and fifty dollars or a hundred dollars for you? One hundred fifty. Yeah, it's, it's cheap if I have the time, but I like. But again, I like doing it, and I think I love doing it mm -hmm. with groups. Like I love yeah. like three coaches get on there, they mm -hmm. sit around the table, they all log in at lunch, mm -hmm. and and honestly, it becomes a real fun time because you're you're getting to go. This is exactly what my problem is. Like this is exactly what I'm trying to teach my kids. Okay, well let's let's walk through it. So this is, here's another I think good example. We so the drill that I'm working on here. This is now the downstream version. Now this isn't the greatest video, and but if you're if you're at all savvy on just watching game film or just watching you know watching you know NHL Network, you can find this stuff happening all the time. So this is my downstream example. Again, it's you're gonna watch. It's the Montreal Canadiens player is actually the it's the it's the it's the the white team in the, in his zone gonna come in, and now he's coming downstream. And look how he positions his body. And he's and he and he corrals the puck, and you can see that he's a right-handed player, so he's able to get his stick in there and then use his body to shield the puck. That's a, that's a skill. I mean, look how he shields off the the uh, Dallas Star player here by not going in stick first, right, and ripping the puck down into the corner. He actually turns his body, protects himself and the puck, and now literally could go any way he wants. In this case. In this case, in the drill, it, it was it was a positive move by going in an offensive way. This puck got out of the zone. You can see he corrals it. He corrals it. Oh, he's got support, and he gets out of the zone. So he corrals it, corrals it. Oh, got support. Now he comes out of the zone. And that's <laughs> – you think about that, guys, or girls and, and coaches. When we're on these – when we're watching these players, it is – happening all the time and all i i hear myself right now yelling from last weekend you got to get to the boards you got to protect that puck you got to get that puck out or you got to secure it right because our defensemen are conditioned now again that's a whole nother <laughs> skill set but our our defensemen are conditioned to wrap the puck up the wall and then we're wondering why we can't get it out because our forwards don't know how to don't know how to angle and retrieve a puck because we've never really shown them and when you go and tell your forwards that they know what you're talking about because you've already you've already explained it to them, so they yeah, they know now, to, to, yeah, they to, know to the terminology, point, Mike, right? Yeah, to your point, Mike, you can start adding. So if I start adding, um, you know, competition in here, 
and I want to put another forward in the place, now I might say, okay, you know, you're this person's coming down the boards to retrieve mm-hmm. the puck. You're mm-hmm. going to come down here. I, now that's what I want to show them. You're going to come down here, but I'm going to show them. Well, you're, but you're going to come in and you're going to angle that player so that you can pinch them off so that they can't go anywhere. Right. So you could teach this both ways, mm-hmm. protecting the puck on the wall. And then how are we going to forecheck by pinching this person off and then getting, and then getting forward movement with the puck so we can keep the puck going offensively into the zone. And then also you could, you could also add that forward right there. Uh, oh, leave that yeah. forward. Go, go uh, redo, redo. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It doesn't matter. My, no. Oh, sorry. I got it. No, I got. Oh, you got to remember, I'm not. I'm yeah. not. I, I'm old school. Coach them still. So go ahead. But yeah, yeah here's my. Okay, here's my forwards. Well, 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 go go and take go and take that that line right there, right? Yeah. And now now go and do kind of a um a low uh, upstream. So take this that. Take, well, take no, take that middle the middle dot there and do an upstream. Oh, yeah. got it. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so go down upstream. You're going down. Yep. Go like that. No, yep. Go low. But then now put another forward right beside there, beside those forwards on the left. You could also yep. have now two forwards, and the second one being the centerman would be support. Right. So you could almost have you could almost have a guy there. So you have an option that forward has an option to chip it on the boards with that defenseman pinching or has an option to put it to the middle right so, right. so and, that would be that, that would be his defense that would be his partner his his uh teammate yeah yeah so and, yeah. I, and I, I think what and i think what so ultimately what i love about drawing these drills on on this new version is being able to take that take that uh i want the player to end up here right yeah so if i know that's where i want him to end up now i can get him there so now i got to figure out how am i going to get him there and mm-hmm. I think that's where this is where this is really cool is you can start playing around and say, okay, what's the where's what's the proper angle going to be here for this player? And then where's that, you know, where's that little, uh, you know, again, that's terminology, right? If I'm going to tell the mm-hmm. kids, this is this is a, this guy's is a chip, right? I, I got to make sure that I'm using that terminology. That's a chip. So now, I, now, but but remember, you can't you can't have a chip in your in your practice without teaching them what, what a chip is, what, what, right, or, or, or how to do it. I mean, I can't believe, I can't believe I was teaching, you know, just players coming up and in the neutral zone, almost coming and then, and then really giving, giving a quick, um, you know, hinge pass back. And it was amazing how many are blowing pucks past the defenseman. I go, no, you don't have to do anything. You just have to, you just have to angle your stick and, and change the, the momentum of the puck. You don't have to, it doesn't have to go anywhere, but whatever, that's, that's another series. But I think, you know, I think for this here, um, again, all of this now, what I like about this is I can now, once I figure out, you know, all these pieces of the downstream, upstream, and um, and my static positioning, I can add to this. So I know when I go in and I, and I show the kids the video, or my coaches, more importantly, too, is when I show them, guys, this is what we really want to teach. This is where we're having the problem. Now, what would be, what would be even better than that video? You know, my own team's video. Yeah. Like if I have my own team doing this, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of debate back and forth whether we want to show our own kids, you know, failing or or being successful. You know, it's and it's harder to find, right? I mean, the nice thing about this this instat is you just ask for what you want and you go find it pretty quickly. Right. But I think in this case, finding video is so powerful. If you're going to sit a coach in this drill and you're going to be down the other end doing a different station, that's mm-hmm. where the video comes in. And it's so powerful because it it shows exactly you know, and articulates exactly what you want to teach through the video that you saw that mm-hmm. inspired you to build the drill. And mm-hmm. I think it really just basically overlays on the drill. So that's, uh, you know, that that's, that's basically it for that. And then obviously now I can go into my plans and I know that, you know, I've built, uh, we can share this, right, Mike? I think we could share this with the group is that now, yeah. Um, yeah, well, we could we could share it with the group, but what what we'll do is we'll share it with the group, and I'll go in there and just I'll yeah, just you'll clean it up and everything. And but if I it. was if I was if I was sharing this with my coaching staff, like this is the, the basically how I would base the plan on, right? I go, okay, mm-hmm. we're gonna do a static retrieval, we're gonna do an upstream retrieval, we're gonna do a downstream retrieval, and in the practice plan, uh, all the videos are right there, so the 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 the, uh, the coach can see it, they can talk, they can see what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. And you know we can grow together with the drill we're teaching. Yeah, and, and go go up to the top of that. Oh. oh, sorry. Yeah, I'll share it again. 
The plan? Uh, yeah. Um, okay, so so go and it collapse everything. Yeah. Um, and, and the one thing is, um, if we want it upstream up, I don't know if uh, anybody knows how easy it is to move it around, right? And and with quick notes that you're able to go in there and put in capitals. I like to put in capitals, uh, discuss, and then colon, and then just say uh, discuss um, um, puck retrieval. Right. And, and then you could use five minutes to do that. And you put that at the beginning. Um, so th there's there's really amazing things that you're able to you're able to go and lay out your practice plan. And let's go. Let's go and save it and let's go and share it. So this is this would be you going and sharing it. You click on the share button. Uh, we're going to go to the group, but you would either go to your team or individual coach or so. Uh, all right. And then you have a lot of people that are part of it. So hit, hit on add group and yeah. then scroll down probably would be near the bottom. Right there. So then just click on share. Uh, no, it's the webinar. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Perfect. So now everybody that's a part of that group, I ended up putting that link on the bottom right there uh, in the in the chat. So if you click on that, um, it automatically uh, invites you to, it puts you in the group. So if you click on that, you should be all set. Um, here, we're gonna get to some questions here. I wanted to just kind of go over um, our blog um, really quick. So. <clears throat> Right now we have it right on Coach Dem. Um, we have it as a feature article. Um, uh, from now on, what I'm going to be doing, I'm just going to be adding to it. So we'll go and we'll go and put uh, the the new updated one. But uh, we also have the uh, uh, episode two, and then we have episode one. So I'm going to tell you, it's just going to get better. Um, any suggestions that you guys have for topics, we would love to do them. Um, if you want to suggest uh, kind of a, um, a skill that you, you want to teach your kids, uh, well, Mike Benelli and I uh, might, might go and do it one time. But if you are able to go and share this register now with everybody that you know, uh, greatly appreciated. Um, so any questions? So let's see here. Kent seemed to join the group. Um, Are you a member of Coach Them? I guess you'd have to be first. Yeah, are you are you part of Coach Them, Manos? No, nope, I don't think you need to join again. Once you're in there, you're in the you're in the drill creation group. Um, yeah. Hey, I'm going to answer Scott though because this is uh, this is where my pain point usually is. Is where can you get good video to use for your plans? So I, honestly, most of my plan videos I find like through on my, if I watch my kids on Live Barn. Or if I get a, if I see a video that I like, like I see a highlight reel of Mike Weaver doing something defensively, all I do is screen sh save it, like a video. I just you know go on my iPhone, I save the video, and then I save it, and then I save it in. You got to save it in YouTube or Vimeo, but you got to save it somewhere so there's a link, and then you have it. And I just name it, like I, I do it all private on Vimeo. It's a private, uh, you know, folder. I say, okay, I love this this uh, this rim pickup. Boom. Done. Yeah, it's on. It. It's there, there's a couple different apps that you could use if you're getting it from, um, if you're getting it from Instagram. There is. Um, uh, I mean, I think you could save the whole thing, but I like to save little clips. So, so in Scott's uh, question, like I only, I don't like, I don't want to see like a, like a, you know, a three minute clip. I just want that little clip. So it might be most of the clips I share with my coaches and kids. Or like eight seconds. So I just want to go in, screen save it. I save it to I make you know I save it to an account that can be shared to coach them, and then I just embed it in my video. And I and and again, you could use, uh, you know, depending on how you're building your practice plans, you could use the same video to 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 teach them multiple skills and put it in multiple drills. Yeah. So uh, on Instagram, you could do repost. Re repost is a good app that you could download the video. Yeah, and then you have it, right? And I think that's the key is, like, I think these kids, and, and more importantly, the coaches 
I love using video when I'm doing lesson plans and station based so I can send to all six coaches and they see the exact video that I'm trying to teach. And it buys them in too. It gets them to buy in because they're like, oh, this is like a real thing. Like this is something that really happens in the game. This is not some BS, you know, Mohawk drill that you're doing in the corner. It doesn't mean anything and I'm not going anywhere. So here you really get to say this is something that happens every day in the game. I, I've been really conscious uh, lately. I've been taking a lot of uh, professional women's hockey game clips and a lot of college hockey game clips for my younger kids because it looks more like them, like it, like they, they, it actually looks like them playing. Because well, number one, they're wearing masks and face shields, but it's also the game looks more like real hockey. It doesn't look like these, you know, Connor McDavid freak show that nobody can do right <laughs> you're doing things that nobody can do so mm -hmm. i try to get a lot of video of players that look like us you know that look like play not like mike weaver but more like normal you know average uh youth hockey players well i'm gonna tell you my i i, I use the shovel basically my 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 stick uh curve is uh in canadian tire the shovel department so um, right. I didn't, I didn't do anything, uh, crazy. Uh, um, just, just so you know, um, John, um, the creation creation series, if you go to the blog right at the bottom, there's Benelli that you can book time with them. Yeah. It's a hundred dollars us. So I think it's what $120. I'm going to tell you it's, I spent that on pucks the other day. So for, for, to go and learn the experience from, um, Benelli is huge. I uh, guess what? No times in January. Like, honestly, you're so, you're so booked now. It's crazy. Um, but it's, he, he's, he said that, uh, you were going to go and create some more times out there. Yeah, so I got to open up. I just, I was my, I saw I'm doing so many things with, uh, like these rookie league series and the NHL groups yeah. that I just have to get my schedule straight now. But I, but again, I've been loving, you know, most of the ones I've been doing are during, like, I mean, I don't know, you might not want to tell your boss, but I'm doing a lot of them during the day. So like, you know, 11 AM to 3 PM. Mm -hmm. It's the best time. Sit down. You know, you could eat lunch during the time that we're doing. Yeah. Like most of the guys that I have on, that I've been that I've been sitting down with, almost like it's almost like a little round table, and they're on their screens and they're having lunch, and we're just talking hockey and figuring out ways to, you know, work with ten year olds, which I think is such a you know an un uh, untapped resource, is, is to just figure out the best ways that we can get our you know eight, nine, ten, eleven year old kids to understand concepts be moving on the ice, but more importantly, like I'm not a big, you know, just moving kids to move them. Like let's move them to, to grow and to teach and to build skills. And obviously having fun within the, all of that is key. Cause that's where I have fun. If I'm, if I'm miserable and I'm in the, you know, I, I see those posts all the time, like, Oh, we're in the grind of, you know, youth hockey season. This is a grind. If you're in a grind in youth hockey season right now, you're, you're, you're in the wrong sport and you're doing the wrong thing. It shouldn't be a grind. It should be, should be a ball coming to practice. And I think the, the coach them piece makes it honestly, I mean, it's not even, it's, it sounds actually ridiculous, but it makes it more fun to come because I'm prepared. I have a plan. My coaches are engaged and I don't have to yell and scream. I just say, here's the plan. Let's do it. It's all laid out and we do it. And I think it's so much more enjoyable to do it that way. Well, well, the, the toughest thing about being a coach is easy to stand on the bench. It's easy to create a roster, but I'm going to tell you um, the the biggest thing for a coach is to go and create a plan. Um, so th that's, that's, that's one of the biggest things at all the time. So, um, and, 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 you know, based off of this, know why you're building the plan, make sure that you just don't say, you, you know, listen, you could, cause the, the, why could be, I want to add, like, I I've done plans in mid season. It's all battle drills. Like today, guys, we're going on the ice. Every drill we're going to do, there's a battle involved. Somebody's going to win. Somebody's going to lose. You can laugh in the guy's face. You can showboat. You can you can be energized. But there's going to be a winner and a loser in everything we do. I mean, we played uh, the other day with our my little rookie league kids. We played, um, you know, uh, I don't know what, what the hell the kids name it. It was like lion and safari, and the and the, the lion was in the, the the circle, and he had to you know hunt down all the gazelles. And these kids got a little graphic, you know, it got a little scary for for seven year olds, but they got it. And there was a hell of a lot of lions out there, and they were laughing and having fun. And I guarantee they use their outside edge, their inside edge, their balance, pivoting, and you know, and 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 learning how to hunt. And I think mm -hmm. that was, uh, you know, so when you have a plan, it makes it so much easier to get involved. Um, 
Okay. Um, so, so the I drills, put. so they're, they're, you're going to have to go to the, you're going to have to go to the plans page in order to get it. Cause Benelli did it. He did the plans. So you have to go in the plans page. So oh, because it's a plan. Yeah. It's a plan. And I'll, we're, I'll we're save all the individual drills too. Yeah. We'll, we'll share all the individual drills too. So. Yeah. This but, is great. Yeah. Any other questions guys? Uh, could, could you give your thoughts on progressing to aggressive pinches for defensemen? Make sure your forwards understand the responsibility, <laughs> how to cover. And that's a, that's a, that's a skill, right? I mean, you, you want, uh, I think we all beat up our defensemen when they're, when, you know, like, you know, the, the last two minute drill and you're not allowed on the pinch. Uh, you know, I, I try not to even call it pinching anymore because I, I, I've really kind of evolved into this, you know, positionless kind of hockey but I, I you know mike mike can speak to this he's the pro here on on defensemen but i think uh you know the way to to progress to get aggressive pinches from d is to build it so that they can have success doing non-aggressive pinches you know build onto it make sure that they're not not going like a bat out of hell down the boards and getting blown up and you well, know yeah well i think there's a i think there's a bigger conversation for that yeah um yeah. because there's there's a there's a lot of little little things that go into I, I there's a lot of little things that go into that because you you're expected be, to be here and there um and I I call it the halfway rule because if you're smart enough you could be here and there at the same time and and that's one of the things if you're expecting your defenseman to go and pinch down when he's at the blue line he has to go 10 feet one way that's that's not it's not where uh it's not going to happen uh if you're if he's standing beside that forward well the puck's not going to go and he's gonna he's going to be caught so i'm going to say that there is there is a way to teach it uh here and there at the same time i teach it at my hockey school defense first um and it's it's something that we're we're based out we're having it in um in July at Scotiabank Pond, um, but it's I teach the thinking part of the game, so you are able to be here and there at the same time. It's just recognizing, recognizing there are more or less there are four situations on the ice. There's in the uh, offensively with or without the puck, and defensively with or without the puck, and you are expected to be in a different place based on uh, that different situation. So your players have to, and you have to explain to them um, how, how that is, um, where you're supposed to be at a certain point, because it changes every single time. Um, so, hey, we, we're going to, it's it's rated in around the hour. Uh, so we're going to cut it off here. But what I would love if any of you are interested in any other topics, um please go and send a message into intercom just say that you're interested in um whatever uh, defensive coverage uh whatever you want want to do we'll go and take those and videli and i will discuss the next uh uh the next one next month all right yeah a lot thank of you so and much think, uh, yeah it's great it's been great thanks mike for having me on again Oh, no, for sure. Totally. It's well, it's basically your show, right? <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> well, maybe one of these days you might. Yeah, I have any gear. Have any gear. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks again, guys. Always a pleasure. We'll, um, we will be in touch.